Welcome to Hamburg, Germany, the birthplace of High Rocks, where in this venue, the best athletes in the world will earn the right on one of the most coveted podiums in sport. High Rocks is the grueling test of strength, stamina, and endurance. The athletes will not only battle themselves, but they will battle the mental toughness, perseverance, and the physical fitness it takes to be a champion. High Rocks is the World Series of Fitness. All right, everyone, that is your top 12 male and female athletes of the High Rocks World Championship. Now, let's walk you through the workouts. Flo is our expert here today. Workout number one is a thousand meter ski erg. Here, we set the pace for the competition. Slate push, 175 kilo for men and 125 for women, and 50 meters to complete for both genders. Workout number three, slate pull. This is your bicep burner at 125 kilograms for men and 75 for women. 50 meters to complete. Workout number four, burpee bro jump. 80 meters to complete. This is your first body weight workout. Just because it's body weight doesn't mean it's easy. Workout number five, a thousand meter row. This workout is about consistency and power, not speed. Now, let's get heavy. Workout number six is a 200 meter farmer carry. Two times 32 kilo for the men, two times 24 kilos for the women. Workout number seven is a hundred meter sandbag lunges. The athletes will be weighted down with 30 kilos for the men, 20 for the women, and the legs will be burning. The fire is still burning with worker number eight, the war balls. 100 repetitions with nine kilos for the men, six for the women. But the finish line is in sight. And of course, there is the runs. Before each of the eight workouts, the athletes will run a thousand meter making up 50% of the competition. You've seen the workouts. Now, let's meet the women who are vying for their chance to become the champion of the High Rocks World Series of Fitness. Well, Flo, I'm so glad to have you here today. This competition is going to be fierce. As you can see right now, we have a mixture of both excitement and nerves. We get quiet, waiting for the call to start. Five, four, three, two, one, go! 
And there we go. We are off on the first 1,000 meter run of the competition. All these athletes, I think out of the corner of their eye, Flo, I think they're watching each other. Exactly. First of all, I'm very excited to get all these athletes next to each other competing on these um, big, big events. Yeah, no, exactly. And you know, walk me through this. I, I mean, we're, we're talking about the first run of the competition. They, they're, they're not sweating yet. They're not, uh, you know, really working at that max potential. Are they just kind of uh, getting their breath going now? What, what's going on? Exactly. So most of them will start to find the pace. It is also very, very important that they do not overpace. So maturity and experience will come into that first run right here. Well, yes. Now, looking left to right, we have five athletes out here right now. The first one let's talk about is Linda Meyer. She is a newcomer to the international racing stage. And uh, obviously, as you can see at home, we have a uh, one runner is empty. Rebecca Netter is uh, out. She unfortunately had a a uh, heart muscle problem and was hospitalized today. So five ladies competing here at the Elite uh, High Rocks event today. And there it is, wow, this is incredible. So we have uh, both Viola and Lauren moving over to the skier. So walk me through here, Flo. We have two different styles. See, uh, Viola's really kind of winding her arms up as she goes through it. Yeah, again, uh, what you want right here is to reach as far up as you can and you want to pull as hard as you can to relax and recover on the way up. But now on the far right, we see that Linda is struggling. That's right. I don't know what just happened right here. She just got off the runner, came over, and then nearly collapsed on the side. There you see Sarah Colty in the frame right now, really working hard. This is a, a bigger athlete. She is, she's definitely going to uh, dominate on this skier. And I'm rather surprised that she's not extending fully her arms because we talked about her height. She could get a little bit more stride if she could reach a bit higher with those long arms that she has. But interesting technique. Let's see where that leads her to. Definitely. Yeah, so Sam Briggs is on now as well. Linda, it looks like she's back up, kind of pulling through this. She's getting, giving it all she's got, I think, right now at this point. But look, once again, she is, she's stopped. I, I, I get the shake of the head. I think she's telling her judge she can't complete. Can't complete. I will follow up with her and see what happens. Now, but looking behind her right now, we've got Sarah Colty. We've got all the ladies really working hard. Notice the judges have their fingers up. This is going to give us a view into exactly how many meters they have left. Each finger representing 100 meters. Also, ich habe schon seit ein paar Monaten eigentlich Schienbeinschmerzen. Und ich glaube, dieses Ding hat mir gerade irgendwie den Rest gegeben. Also, ich bin noch nie da drauf gelaufen. Und diese Steigung ist halt noch viel, viel mehr Druck auf dem Schienbein. Und ja. Das hat jetzt richtig gezogen. Also, ich habe es halt nochmal versucht, aber geht nicht mehr. So it looks like Linda Meyer is completely out. Shin splints to be to blame for this, but as you can see right here, judges' hands are up. We've got only 100 meters, and here it is. Viola just coming off. Wow, that was incredible. And now we're really seeing who's pulling off for first, second, and third place. But let's not be fooled. This is just the beginning of the race. And as you can see on the big screen, you have the heart rate. So this is the percentage of the maximum heart rate. And it's very interesting from my point of view to see how much they're pushing or relaxing at any time. Exactly. Yeah, that, that is an important point. And the, the, the other interesting thing is it's right in front of the athletes. I mean, th this is, I mean, you can really kind of gauge how hard you're pushing and how hard your competition is pushing. Exactly, so it's not all about physical strength, but also your mental strength. And this athlete will keep an eye on their heart rate and their competitors, so they know where they stand and how much they can push forward. Exactly, so we're getting our first split times coming in right now. It looks like, I mean, Lauren Weeks, not too far behind, less than 10 seconds, but Sam Briggs, the, you know, once world champion CrossFit athlete has, uh, you know, dropped back to 17 seconds behind uh, the leader. So, and Viola popping off. I mean, she looks so under control. What do you think is going through her mind right now? Right now, there's not much to say, Ben. Um, the way she performs, she is just, she looks fresh. She looks like she is, she knows what she is doing. She's being prepared for this moment. And uh, they have two different techniques. So. We have Lauren with a bent arm and a viola with straight arm. I personally prefer the straight arm just because you get a bit more breath into your lungs. It's not squeezing your elbows into your 
uh, lungs. Uh, but again, different technique, different body type we have right here. Exactly. So anyways, either way, that you're looking at these, uh, the, the ladies pushing the sled up and down the floor. So some folks are going to be pushing it you know halfway through some folks are going to be going all the way through uh the line so th this is a very interesting story right now we have uh, sarah colty one of the biggest athletes in the field uh, racing head to head and and in fact passing sam briggs as she goes through her first lap lauren weeks taking it all the way back down and I, I, I have to say, I mean, watching Viola in this steady state right now, Lauren taking a quick break and then pumping through all these. Now, once again, we're talking about huge leg burn right now, right? Exactly. So these athletes, what they want to do is to drop their center of gravity and power through the legs. So making the smallest steps as you can because you want to save energy right here. Exactly. So the, the, these big breaths are taking, that's pretty normal right now, right? So, the, I mean, are you holding your breath during the, during the sled push or are you kind of trying to keep breathing up? You really try to keep that oxygen coming in and out of your body. So you, but it is a leg burner. It is, you will feel those concrete legs full of blood pumping. So you do need to take that uh, break. But also that break can be strategic for some runners because it shows maybe weakness or strength exactly. to take a break or not. And, and this is so great right now as we watch uh, Viola kind of pop back to the runner for the next one. I'm looking up there at the MyZone board currently. Once again, our official heart rate tracker of the competition. She's at 96% of her maximum heart rate. Uh, I mean, is this going to slow her down a bit on the run? Well, in, we're going to have to wait and see. Um, it's really hard to say, but they are being challenged massively physically but also mentally because these competitors are running right next to each other they see what the others are doing so um mentally it's going to be very very challenging and stressful sarah colty coming in second off the sled push right now i mean we were expecting this out of the world record holder she is one of the larger ladies in the field i, I think we were kind of guessing that she would do well in this Indeed we were. And those whole strong slate push out with 125 kilogram for the ladies. And we also have to complete 50 meters, which is full length in this setup. Now, this is very surprising for me. Uh, we have Sam Briggs nearly a minute behind Viola Oberlander uh, coming back to that run. That means that she has a very healthy lead. First to fourth, a minute. I mean, th that's a tough gap to, to make up, but we still have some heavy... Uh, workouts coming up exactly so you next workout will be at the sleigh pool and once again this is the bicep burner right here it's going to pump a lot of energy out of these athletes yeah that's that's exactly right so consistency and form is key on this i think i mean we're starting to see these athletes once again bumping the red zone as we look to the my zone board right here hands are up that means we only have a few hundred meters left let's see who can get off this runner first i once again, Viola with a minute lead over some of these other athletes. And it just, just so we understand that... And look at the, ah. the physicality of these athletes. Some are tall, some are shorter. And this makes a difference on those assault runners because the heavier you are, the easier it becomes. Now on those whole strong slate pool, the athletes have 75 kilograms to pull from one end to another. And there we are, Lauren Weeks, second off the runner. So we're seeing kind of a pattern forming here, right? So as Viola kind of keeps the lead going, Lauren seems to be kind of working through these, uh, through these different workouts uh, pretty efficiently. Exactly. As Lauren has a CrossFit background as well, she will be very used to this kind of workout. So is Sam that we are seeing right now on the treadmill still. Yeah, exactly. And Sam Briggs, once again, is the wild card coming in here, right? A CrossFit-specific athlete. This is her first High Rocks competition. And look at that, Sarah Colty. Once again, these stronger elements, these elements that um, require a bit more body weight to move, right, the, these, these heavy sleds, um, really comes into play. So, uh, And then, you know, the other thing to note here, so we're, we're, for some folks I saw in practice, they were doing the hand-over-hand -hand method but these ladies seem to be just walking it back. What's the benefit or the, uh, the drawback for both? Well, in that particular workout, what you want is to use your weight and gravity to take over the momentum of the sleigh. So you want to lean back and use that gravity, the falling part, to kind of take a bit of load off your hands, your upper body, mm -hmm. 
So um, this and this is what we're seeing. Viola is quite high compared to other athletes, but it seems to be still quite efficient for her. Yeah, no, yeah, absolutely. And she, I mean, she seems to be moving it very, very easy. And just like that, she is back to the runner first. I cannot believe this. I'm looking at the MyZone board. 94% of her maximum heart rate. I, <laughs> I mean, this is truly an impressive performance by somebody who once again, like you said, isn't the biggest, isn't the strongest in the field, but maybe it's consistency that will win the day. Exactly. We're just going to have to wait and see if Viola can keep up with the 98% of a maximum heart rate and that a first place most of all. And the athletes also have a specific zone to operate in. So they have about two meters behind them to be able to walk the sleigh as they pull it. Yeah, exactly. So that, that is something to be uh, noted at home. So as you're walking, watching, now here we go. Lauren, this is that other form of pulling that we've seen before, that hand-over-hand -hand method. Now, the, the key here, though, is to keep that sled moving. When you're doing the hand-to-hand-over-hand -hand method, that sled may stop every once in a while. That might slow them down just a little bit. But it seems like Sam is doing the same thing as we once again watch Sarah Colty and Viola Oberlander back on the sled dominating in these first couple workouts. Sam Briggs back to the to the runner. This is incredible. Now, walk me through this. So the, for the CrossFit athlete, they work with sleds a lot more than maybe uh, an OCR racer or a triathlete, right? So this was probably uh, right in her wheelhouse. Exactly, and that's what we're seeing. Uh, Sam Brake already going back to her run before even Lauren, and she was behind uh, starting the sleigh pool. Um, but now it comes to the run, another thousand meters to complete. This is the tough one because you cannot recover. You want to complete this as quick as you can. Yeah, and I'm looking at Sarah. I mean, right here, this is a this is what a veteran is made of, right? She knows exactly how this competition is going to go versus Sam, who, right, this is her first ever experience in High Rocks. I mean, Sarah Colty has, you know, a ton of experience. Plus, you know, coming from a cycling, running background, she is, I mean, definitely suited to catch her breath, get back into pace, and start that second, that, that next run. Now, here we are on the, uh, for some stats for us. All right, so Viola Oberlander, the first one, obviously, to the, 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 the run here. Sarah Colty only 26 seconds behind uh, Viola Oberlander, Sam Briggs, a minute eight, and Lauren Weeks, a minute 30. That's a full 90 seconds ahead as Viola right here begins the burpee broad jumps. Talk me through this. And this is the first body weight workout that we're seeing this evening. But again, let's not get fooled by it because it is hard. You have to go all the way down with your chest touching the ground, and then you have to get your feet as close to your hands as possible and jump as far as you can. I mean, when I'm on the playground playing with the kids, I do a couple of these and I, I, uh, I get tired. These ladies have to do uh, how long, how, how far? 18 meters it is. And uh, look at the different technique that Sarah is implementing into a bur burpee bro jump. She's going forward with one foot only compared to Viola, who's going two feet in. So interesting. Yeah, and then, and then uh, for those at home watching this right now, so we had the, the box, the, the two-meter box that we spoke of earlier where the athletes had to stay in for the sled push. Now we've actually extended the floor. You're going to see them jumping through that box to the straight line right here. Now, uh, the, the other aspect of this, and oh my goodness, we have Viola back on the treadmill. I, I'm, I'm so surprised how much, and there's Sarah, I mean, we have these two top athletes, one of them the world champion, the other one kind of an underdog, really dominating here. So, um, yeah, I don't know, we're, we're seeing some really exciting action. But now we're starting to see also some maybe weaknesses. Um, we have the athletes not starting full pace into their run. They're starting to walk into it. They have a bit of a smile. So they seem to recover at that point of the race. Mm, yeah, no, that this is a really good point that you bring up. So we have, uh, you know, these athletes have gone through now four different workout zones, 4,000 meters running. So yeah, their body, in thir as you saw right there on the screen, 30 minutes have elapsed. Your body kind of settles into this pace, right? Exactly. And if we are halfway, I'm very interested to see if someone can make it under the hour. Let's uh, see. This, this is interesting, right? Because this isn't like a normal High Rocks event where we're actually running on the track. We're running on a manual treadmill. As we look at the, the uh, the stats coming in right now, we have once again Viola Oberlander, the first one back to the run here. Sarah Colty only with a 19-second 
a gap. So she's actually closing the gap on Viola, but here she is again. This woman is just so surprising. I mean, we're watching her go move on to, to workout number five, which is the 1,000 meter row. Exactly, and now we're going to see the different techniques that the athletes adopt because it makes a massive, massive difference into the rowing. And, oh my God, Lauren is back. This is somebody who was just fourth place. She was in last going into, or coming out of the, uh, the sled pool, going into that run right there, and she has now made up that entire ground. That was a minute and 30 seconds. She just closed the gap on Viola. And she might even shorten that gap because she's from a CrossFit background and rowing is a massive tool that they use. So let's see if she can close that gap even closer. Yeah, I, you, you bring up a good point, right? We saw this in Lauren with the, the VCF, the Virtual Championship of Fitness, earlier this year. Lauren dominated in that event. Now, let's see if she can really kind of take that stride and keep working with it. Sam Briggs, once again, uh, closing the, the gap here, I mean, a little bit maybe. I mean, she's not falling too far behind. Um, and this, once again, you know, as a CrossFit athlete, she's going to come in, uh, you know, really well in this. And look at that, Eric. We have in 2021 a live event in Dallas, and everyone can be part of this. Exactly. Even if you're not in the Dallas area, you can still compete in the virtual championship. And I'm telling you, it's so important to get back into live events. You really want to reach forward as far as you can with your hands and pull as far back as you can. So you've got that long stride and then you've got also a longer way to recover. And here we go. Viola is back to her running. Let's see how far is Lauren trailing Viola. I mean, I'm looking at her face. I'm seeing uh, the MyZone board up there. She see, yeah, she has, there you are. She checks the board herself. She wants to kind of uh, maybe, do, maybe do a little mental check-in at this point, you know, halfway through, over halfway through the race. And there is Sarah Colty. I told you, you cannot count her out. Throwing the, the fingers up, she looks under control. Now, as a triathlete, as somebody who is well you know, in tune, I think, with uh, this time domain, she's pretty much settled in. I think this is a very comfortable pace that she can keep. Exactly. And then we're just going to have to see how she, she holds that along the, the other workouts and the running. And now we've got Sam, who's uh, on her way to the next 1,000 meter run. She's shaking the arms off. Yeah, so uh, once again, at home, as we're watching this, you had Viola, who's holding this nice steady lead. Uh, Lauren Weeks, who, right, going into the rower, was somebody that had just closed a minute 30 gap, and then bang, there's Sarah Colty. She's already back. She's running this thing out, but it looks like Sam Briggs is really struggling at this point to keep it up. Now, as we come into this, the, the gaps are, 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 are basically shaking out. 19 seconds for Sarah Colty behind Viola Oberlander, 30 for Lauren Weeks, and a nearly a minute, 50 seconds for Sam Briggs. Now, here we go, chalking up. How important is that at this point? Are we? Are it, is, it is one of the easiest workouts out of the whole High Rocks competition. So now they can really gain time. Some of them are maybe gonna go for a little sprint. Let's see, let's see what happens. But this is the, the gap that can be closed from first to last place. Right, so we just saw that right there. So Lauren didn't waste any time, no chalk for her. She literally just picked them up. Now, uh, to walk me through this too, because I'm watching Lauren with that chest up position, Viola a little bit more shrugged over. What's the what's the difference here? Well, um, again, body, body height is a massive uh, difference in that one. Um, maybe Viola is just hunched back a little bit just to get more into the lungs. This is a resting position maybe. And remember they have two times 24 kilogram to hold. So it is, it is a lot to carry. Yeah, definitely. Okay, we have all the ladies off. Uh, this is once again, this heavy stuff is suits Sarah very, very well. So I would imagine that she's, any gap that she did just lose to Lauren on that run, she's gonna make it back up right here. But I will say, Lauren is looking tough. Viola is, I mean, well out in front, but man, Lauren is closing that gap. They have 200 meters to complete and they're coming to the last part of it with Lauren still tracing Viola. Yeah, and neither of them have put this, this weights down. So look at that, I'm seeing this, the struggle is real at this point, right? But that is it. We have Viola coming in, about ready to put them down and right back to the runner. Look at that my zone board. I'm telling you, these ladies are pushing themselves so hard, well into the 90s, that red zone. What does that tell you about where they're at in this race? Well, it's gonna come to maybe crimping, um, 
they are sweating and sweat is a lot of, of nutrient that the body needs for all these big muscles that these athletes are using. So let's see, and here we go. We've got Lauren that is uh, shaking the arms. Maybe she needs a little rest. And it's coming to that last quarter really of the race where condition conditioning is gonna hit them hard. Yeah, definitely. I, I mean, this 200 meters is the long distance. So as you're seeing at home, they're dropping it just slightly, just to grab a little bit of blood flow back into those hands. And there it is. We've got a really great race going on between Lauren Weeks and Sarah Colty right now. So this is exciting. But once again, as you look towards Sarah's face, she looks calm, she looks collected, but so does Viola here. As we go into the seventh run of this eight run workout, I, I just, I can't believe it. I mean, we're looking at, you know, sweating athletes by this point. I mean, what, what, are, we, what are they looking at on that screen right there? Probably the heart rate where they're standing at. And also we talked about the mental strength. They're probably checking out what the others are because the next workout is your lunges. Right. Yeah. So it's gonna be taxing on the body. It's a lot to carry. Yeah, so as you just saw right there, the stats come up. We've got Viola Oberlander once again in the lead. Lauren Weeks, 39 seconds behind. Sarah Colty, 43, and Sam Briggs, uh, well over a minute at this point. But here we go, Viola Oberlander. <laughs> I mean, she is not wasting any time getting that bag on her back and starting those lunges. 20 kilo sandbags they have to carry over the shoulders for a length of 100 meter. The rule here is that the judges will be looking at the knee. The knee has to be touching ground at each step, otherwise it's a no rep. And this is when we really want our sponsor Red Bull to come in and give us wings to fly through that 100 meter sandbag at 20 kilos over shoulders. I can only imagine what their quads must feel like at this point because you know those runners that we've we, you know, we've been talking about these runners that just blow up the backside, right? Your hamstrings, your glutes, everything, and then we go to the lunges where it's all about quads. It's all about, you know, really burning up those hip muscles. So yeah, it's, it's pretty crazy that the, that viola looks so composed this deep into the workout. And it's, it's also stability. They have to balance. You can't fall off. Yeah, it's same in the running. So it's not just getting through a, a hard workout, but there's some technique in there. There's some um, stability, balancing that is involved. But now we're seeing something quite important that Lauren is starting to really close that gap on Viola. Yeah, that, that is true. I mean, we're seeing rep for rep, these ladies are only about 10 behind. And now as you're watching at home, we have the, the solid line back there is where they're lunging to. So a little bit further distance each and every time. But look at this, we've got Viola who literally at the start of this race had a sizable lead over Lauren is now losing that lead. Maybe we're starting to see this shift happen. Maybe we've, 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 we're deep into this, into this competition. Things might begin to change. And as you see, uh, Lauren is uh, taking a step and then two feet. She rests for a bit a second on two feet and she goes through some, uh, some sequence of two, three lunges, then she stops for a short break. Um, very interesting, is, is she saving herself for the last thousand meters she has to run and then that's where she's gonna power through? Yeah, the only thing stopping her right now is that last run and the 100 wall balls, I, it's, it, it's quite, quite a compelling story right here, but wow, wow, this is insane. We have Viola once again, somebody who came out of nowhere in front of us, but look at that, Lauren, only a couple seconds behind Let's look at that my zone board. They are both in the red zone as they move on to this last, the final run of this competition. And this is when the mentor will come into place. You know that you're almost there, but you still have that last 100 wall balls to complete. And it is not an easy one to finish off with. So it's going to be interesting to see who's got the mental to really push through. Yeah, you're, you're exactly right. But this is what High Rocks is all about. It's about head-to-head -head competition, right? And these ladies are the best in the world, right? I mean, literally, we have Sam Briggs out here, first High Rocks ever, let's, let's be clear about that, you know, challenging some of the most seasoned veterans of all time. Now, here we go. Into the lunges, or out of the lunges, that is. We have Viola Oberlander still in the, still in, uh, the lead, but only five seconds is separating first and second place. Could you ask for a better race? I, I don't think so, man. This is, this is really exciting. Sarah Colty only 27 seconds behind, and Sam Briggs closing the gap slightly, but still 50 seconds off the leader. And if we look at a first and second place right here, we see that Lauren is having a, a faster stride. So is she just pull, 
pushing a little bit more or is Viola resting a little bit? Uh, we'll it, have to wait and see. This, this is a very good point right here. I'm watching them kind of go back and forth, staring at each other's screens to kind of see what's... And there it is! We've just now seen the turnover the, for the first time in the race. Lauren Weeks is the first to the wall ball right now. This is what competition is all about. This is head-to-head. -head. This is High Rocks. And Viola, oh my goodness, has just now jumped off the runner. She is back over to the wall balls. It is literally going to be a fight to the finish. Perhaps maybe even a photo finish as we go through this. Now, a couple points as we watch this unfold. We have these two ladies going head to head. The judges in front of them are keeping tabs on the reps, so we'll be able to watch and see which, uh, like how close or how far the gap is away. Right here, 27 reps to, to Viola's 22 reps. Oh my goodness, we're only a few reps away from each other. It's really gonna come down to who breaks first. Exactly, and now let's remember, they have to push through six kilos wall ball at a height of 270. Yeah, exactly. And here is Sarah Colty just jumping off. She's going to join in the mix. This is, she's a bigger athlete, taller athlete. This is where she could maybe make up a little bit of time. Indeed, because the closer your hands are from the target, the easier it will become. Wow, 59 to 53 reps. They have not broken once. I cannot believe how close this is. I, I, you have to imagine. And there it is. Lauren Weeks puts the ball down for the first time. This could be the point at which Viola takes over the lead once again. Oh, ladies and gentlemen at home, I cannot tell you how incredible these ladies have performed. We are over an hour. Look at that my zone board as Sam Briggs now gets off the runner and moves over to the to the wall balls. Everyone is maxing out. Everyone is giving all that they have for this last workout. And Viola goes down as well. Only a couple reps left. She's starting to fail. Her form is now falling apart too. Yeah, it, we're coming to the last bit of energy that these athletes are really um, it, it pushing through. So it's it's the tough, tough part. Yeah, 76 reps, 93, 94 reps, only a couple left. Lauren has truly pulled away as Viola starts to crumble in front of her. And Lauren looks locked in. She looks ready. Only the last one right here. And there it is. Lauren Weeks takes the championship of fitness. Oh, my goodness. This is incredible. What a Cinderella story. I'm telling you, Lauren Weeks coming from last place right into first place. Incredible. Yeah. Oh, this is so good as she walks back and look at, here we go, Viola. Only a couple reps left. She's looking towards the finish line. She wants this competition to be done. 98, 99, 100 repetitions for Viola as she walks across the line. She looks out of it. She looks done. Her gas tank is empty. But congratulations to her for keeping up with the first place for the whole race. For someone that is new to Hard Rocks, new to the racing scene. And here we're seeing great sportsmanship between the two athletes. Ah, uh, man, this is, this is truly incredible. So there it is. Sarah Colty, only a couple. She closed the gap huge right there. 97, 98. And she is done, ladies and gentlemen. Sarah Colty. Well done, well done, taking the third place spot and quickly finding the ground as she crosses the finish line. Sarah, such a great sport, such a great energy. Sam, not too far behind either, 98, 99. I think she went unbroken on all 100 reps. This is truly the sign of a veteran, somebody who never has quit in her heart or in her mind. Now, let's go down and check in with our world champion of fitness. Uh, my strategy originally is I wanted to come out first so I could kind of ease up, but um, turns out I was last for the majority of the race, so I just had to push the runner, but at a comfortable pace where I knew I could go into the next exercise and be okay. Now, our wild card, Sam Briggs. Let's go down and see how she feels about the results. So I had to stick to my own game plan. Uh, and then just try and push as hard as I could on the workouts. Unfortunately, it was just a little bit too much on the, on the run and I couldn't catch them, but uh, still gave it everything I had and then the crowd was all cheering for their wall balls, so I had to go unbroken at the end. <laughs> just an incredible performance by all these ladies today at the World Championships of Fitness here in Hamburg, Germany. Now, as we look at the stats, Lauren Weeks taking the, the crown today, but Viola only 36 seconds behind. Sarah, a minute and five seconds, falling back just a little bit behind 
uh, is Sam Briggs at a minute 20, but incredible performances. And here is your champion, Lauren Weeks, taking the podium. All right. Yeah, to Las Vegas, Nevada. There it is. Big hugs from Lauren and Sam. Remember, this is somebody who looked up to Sam Briggs. She, she's been idolizing her for years as the world champion. Sarah Colty, obviously, good smiles. Viola, I mean, I, I just, I would love to know what's on her mind right now as she sits there in second place amongst such talent. And there it is, the crowning jewel of the first place. We've got the big bottle of Steiner, our partner at the High Rocks World Championships of Fitness. And there is Lauren Weeks standing atop amongst incredible athletes. And that is your elite women. Okay, what we're looking at here is first off, Hunter McIntyre, the 31-year-old boat pony. I mean, the self-proclaimed fittest man in the world. He's coming in here with a world record time as well as pretty much claiming that nobody is even gonna touch him, you know? Who else do we have? We've got Lucas Storath, and we know the name in the High Rocks world because he's the first one to make it under an hour. He's a police officer, and he knows what he's doing. So a name to look at for. Definitely. And then the wild card. We have Adam Klink coming in from Chesapeake, Virginia. This is a guy who's unproven, but he's the first guy ever to back squat 500 pounds and run a sub five minute mile. I'm expecting big things out of Adam. Another German on the race is uh, Marcus Frison, and he is the world virtual champion for this year. And he's also one to look at. He's a former professional cyclist, so he's got strong legs, he's got the stamina. Really one to look forward to. Yeah, so the excitement's uh, coming down the pipe. I think uh, this men's race is truly gonna be a nail biter. Seeing a lot of excitement right now, maybe a little bit of nerves as these men get prepared for this race. Big breath, I mean, you can feel the excitement in the air right now. And Lucas, he knows what he's doing. He's been here before. He's in his tunnel, getting ready to rumble. And of course, the sheriff himself, Hunter McIntyre, ready to play. I mean, this guy has been, you know, talking, running his mouth all week. Let's see if he can perform and back up what he's been saying. Exactly. So next to him, we have Adam, the second American in this race, and he's been firing back at the talk as well. So let's have those two men side by side racing this evening. Yeah, it looks like all smiles, but here it is, though. That I mean, you know, we got Toby out here on the outside as well. So 
Toby's here to prove himself. I mean, standing next to two of the biggest athletes in the field. And as they come to the start line, I see Hunter's already got his shirt off. It is time to see who the champion will be. Take that last big breath by Lucas. Will they come out hot? And there it is. Here we are on the start of the Elite Six Men right now at the High Rocks World Championships of Fitness. The pace is already going as I looked at lanes three and four right here, left to right. We have Lucas Storath and Hunter McIntyre. I'm noticing straight away, Lucas's legs are moving a lot faster than Hunter's are. Exactly. So again, let's not be, we, we have the asshole runner here and the heavier you are, the easier it's gonna be. So with these two athletes next to each other, we've got the shortest to the tallest and that's gonna make a difference overall. Yeah, exactly. Just like we've talked about uh, before, right? It's all about pulling through that treadmill. That There is no motor on this treadmill, right? They have to power themselves through the thousand meters all the way. Yeah. And so we're just kind of seeing them warm up. Uh, you know, here's Marcus Friesen. I mean, a guy that, you know, relatively unproven in the sport. Let's see how he goes out and tries to hold pace or just runs his own pace here in the first thousand meters. Fingers are going up. We have 100 meters left for Tobias. And here it is. Luke. Oh my goodness. Luke is running over to the skier and just violently ripping down on the handles here. And that's an interesting technique that he's um, adopting right now. Getting those fast tries just to get the engine going. And now he's finding his pace. And there's Tobias. Oh man. Toby coming through. Moving on to it now, I noticed he had the shorter strides on his run right there. I wonder if that was a, a, a energy conservation or if that's just like how he runs in, in general. We will we'll see as we uh, have seven more runs like that to come. And of course, Hunter McIntyre taking a peek to his right, looking where Lucas is at. Adam is on to the ski erg as well. Now, we have to understand these Concept 2 ski ergs are incredible incredible machines, right? A lot of upper body versus the Concept2 rower, which is more lower body, right? Yeah, exactly. But nevertheless, the cardio is being challenged in both workouts, ski erg and um, a rowing. So it also comes down to that cardio part of, of high rocks. Yep, exactly, exactly. And you're watching these guys pull a 140 pace. So that's a 140 pace per 500 meters. So we're thinking 500 meter pace in 140 so we're looking at around three minute three minutes until they finish and now we're having a look at uh, their heart rate that's the percentage of the maximum and we have marcus who's really high right now is he overpacing himself too early i, I this is a great question right because lucas is setting the pace high i know that there was some talk in the interviews as to you know who would come out the hottest, you know, to kind of kind of pulling them in, right? Fishing for them to kind of like jump off their game as they go into these first couple runs because so much can be determined, you know, by, by just blowing yourself up too early in this race. And there is Hunter McIntyre, second off, only a couple seconds behind. Yeah, actively pulling himself, getting in to go. And, and but once again, there's Tobias right there, Tobias Loudfine. Wh who would have thought, right? He's one to keep an eye on. Do not underestimate Tobias. There we go. And Adam Klink right there. Another stronger athlete. You know, maybe this could kind of uh, show us what the future is going to hold here, right? So we have a heavier athlete, as you said before. It's going to pull that belt along a little bit easier, okay? Tim Schroeder, Marcus, back on the runner. So here we go for run number two. Everyone's kind of checking their heart rate, walking through it. Now, as you see the uh, the results come up, come up on the board, Hunter McIntyre only nine seconds behind Lucas. Tobias, same thing, nine seconds. I mean, they came off at nearly the same time, which is incredible. Tim and, uh, and Adam, one second apart, about 16 seconds off the leader. And then Marcus, 22 seconds. Man, I'm telling you, I hope Marcus has got some room in the tank because he's going to need it later in this race. Remember, he comes from a professional cycling background. Um, so he's got the mental strength to pull it out. But again, 
that's only kilometer two of their overall race. That's right, and there we go. We get a close look right there as Lucas finishes his second run, moving right on to the sled push. These hold strong sleds, I, I mean, they are so heavy. I cannot believe it. And he's adopted that same tactic that we saw Lauren Weeks at with that bent elbow, right? What are they pushing through this? That's it. We are at 175 kilograms for the men category, and they have to cover 50 meters once again wild and there is Tobias Loudfine a guy that I I mean I personally didn't expect to just be so dominant here early in this race okay quickly going right to the up oh, but there is Hunter right behind him coming up into it and this is where the weight comes in right so and we look at that physicality that Hunter is bringing this is a different physicality that uh, to be Tobias is bringing and you can see it he's just racing him through absolutely so just it's, it's gonna be hunter dominating and Tobias is basically just trying to hold on for dear life as he gets going the look of a champion right here with hunter coming through taking a quick pause about two breaths right there now what does that pause mean for the body well it's it's really getting the the legs a bit of a rest um, getting that oxygen into the lungs because as I said he's uh, adopting the short elbow technique this means that he's going to squeeze his lungs and not getting much oxygen in. Yeah, it might be that Lucas is slowing down a little bit. He's coming to the line right there, quickly turning around, grabbing a quick breath. But look at this, Hunter McIntyre not slowing down at all as he turns around, sees the sight. This could be his opportunity to overtake. But look at down there on the far end of the screen, Adam Plink is just dominating on the sled push. Hunter, a strategic break right here in the middle of the floor and look at the leg turnover. I mean, you can't deny he is just a stronger athlete. Look at that, he's pretty much sprinting through, which could be his last length. And there he goes, back into the run. We've just now seen the first turnover of the race. Lucas coming out hot, being the first back from the skier. Now it's Hunter's race. He's got Lucas basically neck and neck now as, uh, as we head into our third run. Adam Klink definitely starting to show a little fatigue down there, shaking it off. Toby, oh, I mean, we can't, <laughs> we can't count Toby out though as he finishes his sled push and he goes right back to his runner. So Tobias Loudfine, the guy that, you know, arguably the skinniest guy out here compared to Lucas and Hunter holding a solid third. But remember, this high rocks is made of 50% running and that makes a big difference. So Tobias is a good runner. He's a light runner, as you mentioned as well. So he can gain a lot of time in his running. That's exactly right. And you're seeing Adam Klink right there really pushing the pace on the sled. He knows that he has to dominate in this, uh, in this workout or else he's gonna fall apart. But it looks like right now that this exercise has now taken over and really, really made him that fatigued uh, level. And then over here on the side, Marcus Friesen and Tim Schroeder nearly neck and neck on the sled push. And also quite interesting to see now the gap being drawn between Adam and Hunter. And that's gonna play for Hunter's game strategy, mental strategy, because now he's pushed up and that's gonna go on. Yeah, exactly. And so we have Adam Klink now taking a stride back to the to the air runner. Now, we have to think too, now these we're over here in Hamburg, Germany. Uh, Adam has just flown over from the United States. Recovery has not been his friend. Um, I know after our gym session the other day, I was talking to him. He was using the Flow Sports uh, machine on his body to help him recover, get his muscles back right. But it could just be this jet lag. I mean, he could be, you know, just compounding his fatigue by doing the sled push. So, yeah, it's, it's, it's really, really a tough thing to fly across the world and compete. So, but look at this. Here we go. We have Tim Schroeder definitely ahead now, at least by a sled length uh, to Marcus Friesen as he finishes his. And Marcus, there we go, crossing the finish line. Only a few seconds behind, but look at that. His face is just showing it, right? Only a couple workouts in, and he is looking pretty tired. I've talked to him just before the race and asked um, what are the products sticks for this race, and he said it's, it's a good, if it's a good day, then I'm going to go on. And it looks like he's struggling. He's not really on his A game. Yeah, and as we look up at the My, board, My, My Zone screen up there, we have 
Uh, definitely a lot of red going on. Um, all right, with all the athletes back onto the uh, onto the runner, let's talk about a little bit of uh, the split times here. So Lucas, only four seconds behind the leader Hunter McIntyre. Tobias, 31 seconds. Once again, a pretty surprising time. Adam, a full minute 20 back. Tim, minute 41. And then Marcus, definitely approaching the two minute mark as Hunter is already off moving into the sled pull. Well, there is a beautiful man right there. Uh, and speaking of beautiful men, I mean, Flo, we have the new Puma merch is dropping at wit.com. All the new collection for this season. It, uh, I mean, you know, you, you're doubling this weekend as not only the uh, co-commentator with me here, but you're also a, a Dino supermodel. <laughs> it's great to have you here, Flo. All right, and there is Hunter McIntyre running into his judge as he passes his first length. Oh, and he gets a slight penalty. He has to pull that all the way across. So we saw this in the ladies' race as well. You have to get the, the, the sled all the way across those small hash marks there. Once again, Flo, walk me through this. They're not using the hand-over-hand -hand method. They're walking it back in the space. Exactly, because what you want is to use as much of uh, the big muscles to pull that sleigh and not just um, the upper body. So that's why they really lean them back and then walking the rest out. And remember, they have 125 kilogram to, ki or to pull over a 50 meter length. Yeah, and that's, it, well, exactly. And so the, the other aspect too is, I mean, s stepping backwards like that obviously kind of like gives the hamstrings a little break too, right? It puts it on the quads. Exactly, yep. So um, you, you try to, s to be energy efficient as much as you can um, and I, I could imagine that some athletes will uh, finish the lengths with a bit more upper body just to get the legs a bit of a rest for the next run. And that is right. You know, as we look across the field right now, we have Lucas Storath, the, the you know, current world champion racing head against against the current world record holder hunter mcintyre but we can't uh, we can't discount tobias loutwein right there a guy that i honestly is just really showing up doing well adam clink now onto the sled pull as well see now using the hand over hand method is that i mean would you say that's more efficient for the bigger guys well, he's probably uh, giving a, a good rest to, to the legs and he can use the upper body. He's, he's got a strong upper body. So he's probably just, you know, we talked about uh, energy efficiency and he's doing that right now. Yeah, exactly. Hunter McIntyre down here giving that last big pull. Now he's switched over. Ah, he's done one more pull. He thought he had to do one more length and now he's back in. Taking a peek up there at the, uh, the my zone board. Uh, you know, a lot of red zone going on. Luke is kind of bumping into that red zone as well, and then Hunter solidly in the red zone. So these guys are really pushing it right now. This is a, uh, a very, very challenging beginning of the race. But Adam is still in the green zone. Um, is that him saving himself for later throughout the race, or is that... Uh just the malfunction of his heart rate, I don't know. Yeah, it could be both. You know, once again, these athletes, we're only a few minutes into this into this longer race, right? So this is something that him as a CrossFitter might actually be comfortable in. He might be kind of, he understands how to conserve himself uh, during during this time domain. But looking at his face right now, seeing the, the uh, fatigue set in, I think it, uh, I think, I think he's definitely feeling it so far. Marcus Friesen, all right, he is now on to the sled pull as Adam is getting his uh, last few few uh, few reps in. And man, I'm telling you, the pace has slowed quite a bit. He, he's looking tired. He's, uh, I don't know what's happening to him right now, but he's uh, struggling big time. So hopefully he's just taking a bit of a break in this workout number three, and then he's gonna pull it out for further along the race. Exactly, and so Adam now moves into a solid fourth position as the leaders are out in front. Hunter McIntyre, Lucas Storath, and Tobias Lautwein. Now this, this competition is so important. Obviously Adam Klink, the wild card here, kept flying all the way over. And it must be said, you know, this race was so important to the High Rocks competition calendar, right? We had the world championships planned, but we had to make adjustments due to COVID. These athletes have flown from all over the world and come from all over Germany. We were tested every single day to make sure that we 
uh, contain and, and, and test for um, our, our competition bubble. So these athletes have gone through rigorous testing. We've taken all the necessary precautions, just like High Rocks has planned for the 2020 run season. There we go, and Marcus Friesen looking very, very tired, doubling over. You know, the, there's that old adage about competition. You know, you meet yourself at that end point, and I think he's truly meeting himself here. And then after the sled pull, everyone back on. We, let's look at some stats. We have Hunter McIntyre and Lucas Storath in the first and second place, respectively. Lucas dropping to 14 seconds behind the leader, and Tobias, 50 seconds, Adam Klink, a minute 41, so a large, large gap between third and fourth place. Hunter McIntyre fast off the ground. Tell me about the burpees. Uh, we obviously don't want to rest too far, too much on the ground. Exactly. You just want to bounce off the ground as much as you can and get as much ground forward in your jump. Um, the difference between the two athletes here is the height. Mm. Hunter has long legs, he has to go a long way off the ground compared to Lucas, but Lucas seems to struggle a little bit on that one. He's taking a knee, then a foot to get up. Yeah, and you know, I think so much of this competition right here with, with Hunter trying to beat Lucas mentally, right? He wanted to get down that first length of the turf so that Lucas could see him you know, uh, have a, having a, accomplished one lap already, but Lucas is wasting no time, but nor is, is Hunter. He is back on it, taking smaller jumps, it looks like. Yeah, he's uh, taking a small jump. He has more to carry. He has more weight to carry in the jump, so he's saving himself by maybe doing a little bit more reps, but not exhausting himself in that broad jump. Yes, and, and we're looking out here also at Tobias Loudfine in the corner of our screen right here almost matching Lucas at this point, which is just once again so surprising. This runner, this dark horse coming out and really showing up at, at, uh, at the High Rocks World Championships. Hunter moving back down now. This is uh, quite a gap. He's now pulling ahead of Lucas on a, now a lap and a half respectively. And we t let's talk to me a little bit about form too, because we also have chest the chest upright a little bit more, it looks like, on uh, for Hunter, whereas Lucas, yeah, a little bit more hunched over. Yeah, what I'm uh, really looking at here is the arm action, because you can get a lot of momentum by throwing your arms forward, which both athletes are not doing a lot, a great deal of it, actually. Yeah, exactly. And here we go, Hunter McIntyre already lapping these other athletes. I, I, you know, we saw a lot of this in the interviews the other day and, and the, uh, you know, the gamesmanship that was happening. I mean, Hunter was saying he was going to come out strong, come out powerful. And I mean, so far he's showing up. But I'll tell you what, the, the real race right here is Lucas just on the heels of Hunter. Hunter moving a little bit slower as I see him on this runner right now. And there's Tobias now finishing it out, maybe grabbing another breath or two as he is on, uh, on the ground and standing up not too far behind, quickly coming over, grabbing something. Looks like some nutrition. He's trying to get in some, uh, you know, gels. The, all these things that, the, you know, for Toby as a, uh, as a runner, these are a quick carbohydrates too, right? Exactly. So those gels are made for um, getting some fluid in, but getting some nutrient in. As we talked in the women's race, you, they are sweating quite a lot. So they're losing a lot of uh, nutrient, which they need for preventing cramping or, um, or other, other, other situations. Yeah. And as I was looking at that right there, so Adam Klink now onto the burpees, you really can see how much bigger Adam is than these other athletes. I mean, muscle has so much to do with it when it comes to running, when it comes to moving yourself up and off the ground like we're seeing here in the burpees. Exactly, that's extra kilograms he has to carry. And remember, it is 80 meters length they have to go to in this bro uh, burpees bro jump. Exactly, so as we go down here, we have Tim Schroeder also onto the burpees. Hunter and Lucas. I, look, I just I can't deny the fact that Lucas just looks like his run is just more efficient, more uh, just faster than Hunter. Yet Hunter still holds the lead here. But that's also the uh, factor in using an assault runner that the weight is going to make a difference. And remember, Hunter is a lot heavier than Lucas, so he doesn't have to produce as much power to get forward as Lucas has to. 
Yeah, exactly. So both Tim and Adam back in here. Uh, Adam definitely grabbing a drink of water before he gets onto his next run, moving his legs a little slowly, which is concerning. And as we take a look at some stats right now, moving uh, after the burpees, we have Hunter McIntyre in the lead, Lucas Stolrath with a 12 second gap behind the, the leader, and then Tobias Loudfine, really, the, once again, uh, just the real surprise in this race right now with a 50 second uh, d delay off the first base position. And now we're going on to workout number five, which is a thousand meter rowing and Hunter is still leading the race. Closely by Lucas. Exactly. So, you know, the one thing that's coming up, you know, the, the you know, as I, as I look at these athletes going to head to head, we, we can't, we can't not talk about the 2021 season. High Rocks is coming back big time for Dallas, February 20th. It is going to be an incredible show and so important, right? Not only for these athletes, but for, for you and I and for everybody out there watching this right now, it's so important that we get back to live events. You know, High Rocks has put out so much in terms of uh, its safety plan to make sure people are are, are tested, getting tested, and, and, and our, our bubble at every event is being intact. So, uh, yeah, so look out for that on February 20th. And if you can't make it to Dallas, High Rocks is also going to be putting on a virtual uh, competition that day. I'm really excited to see how that comes out. And there is Toby already coming back to uh, coming back to the rower for here in his third position, holding strong. I, <laughs> talk to me about Toby right now. How is he doing this? Well, he's a strong runner. That's his uh, really uh, power here. Um, he's really eating the time in his running. And he must be a fighter, a mental fighter, because he's not letting these two guys too far ahead of him. Yeah, the, and look at that. Just as Toby gets on, Hunter is getting off. Once again, coming back to the runner. I mean, th this is just an impressive show. I mean, you know, we saw Hunter talking to himself, talking himself up before the race, too. I mean, so much of this is not only him beating his com competitors mentally, but him beating himself, right? Beating back that pain because, you know, he's a great athlete, but I know that he's got to be feeling the fatigue by this point, five events in. But again, he's had a bit of a trash talk with Adam, announcing that he is far ahead of him. The mental must be going quite well for him. That's pushing him. It's This, this race is not just a physicality, but how long can you push at that very, very high rate? Yeah, and look at that right there. You see over his shoulder, Lucas turns and takes a peek at where Hunter's at. I, I just, I have to say, once again, going back to this running form, Lucas just looks so composed, even though he's moving at that higher pace, right? And Tobias, Tim, Sh Tim Schroeder now on to the rower. Okay, now Tim is a longer athlete, so we have a little bit better pulls maybe coming out of it than somebody shorter like Marcus. Um, and there's Toby once again smashing those gels, making sure that he stays, you know, fueled for the for what's to come. I mean, I think with a with a leaner athlete like this, you're you're in constant state of uh, you know trying to hydrate and also trying to make sure you have enough uh, energy within the system to keep yourself going. And Adam Klink now on there. This is something that a CrossFitter, he's feeling very comfortable at the, in the rowing game, right? And, you know, t back here, Marcus Friesen still kind of falling back behind the leader even more as we get uh, back to that rower. Now, let's talk about one, two, three here real quick. Once again, Hunter McIntyre, Lucas Solrath, one and two, respectively. Dropping back just slightly is Lucas. I'm assuming it's because of the body weight, because he's uh, Hunter's a little bit taller. 24 seconds off the leader, and then Tobias definitely as well. A minute 21 behind the leader. And now Hunter is on his next workout with the farmers carry. Third, two times 32 kilos to hold for 200 meters. Right, yeah, and just like we saw in the women's race too, notice how the shoulders are kind of dipping forward. I wonder if this is a, a form, uh, you know, it, what, like what's going on here? Whereas Lucas, you see his shoulders are back, he's kind of holding the kettlebells out away from his legs. Yeah, holding, holding your back straight also uses energy. So probably um, these athletes are hunching the back just because they can feel that they get a bit of a rest. Yeah, and look at that. There's the face of a champion right there. That's a guy who wants to win, right? Hunter McIntyre taking those big breaths as he kind of bears down and grits it out for this last few laps. 
quick break, quick chalk up. Will that be the, what he, what Lucas needs? I mean, I'm telling you, this is an exciting part right here. Lucas is now making up some ground on Hunter as we go through these last couple laps on the Farmer Carry. Now, once again, yes, 32 kilo in each hand. That is no joke. Your grip strength, your your central nervous system, right, is getting taxed as you go through this. And you look at the way they actually turn around after each length. They make a little circle to use the momentum of the swing of the kettlebell to just add a bit of speed and not just turning around and, and starting from zero as well. So this is a little technical part which helps those athletes. And quick, I mean, Hunter not losing a second as he knows Lucas is, oh my goodness, Lucas has dropped the kettlebells. This is going to be a major uh, fault because that every second counts at this point. Lucas had a great, uh, you know, he was gaining on Hunter so much in that last little bit. So this could seal the deal. I don't know, but I, I mean, Hunter looks composed. You can tell right now he's definitely feeling the fatigue as we are six workouts deep in this, uh, in this, in this competition. It's going to play massively into the mental strength as well now uh, to Lucas. Dropping that, um, it, it, it shows the weakness, and that's not what you want to show against um, oh, a contestant. That looked painful. I mean, you see the pain on Lucas's face. He is working so hard. A quick drink, and there, and, and I saw, saw the corner there. Tobias is still out there on the floor with his kettlebells. Look at that. Shoulders back. This is more that chest-up posture that we were talking about, but not taking a break. Toby... Man, this guy is taking the day for me. Look at short, choppy steps, keeping his hips a little unlocked. That is truly impressive. And look at that. He is not too far behind. One, once again, trying to eat as he goes. That is, that's kind of the sign of the runner, isn't it? Man, I'm telling you, I'm watching these guys shake their hands out a little bit as we're back on the runner after the farmer carry. We have the Flow Sports gun is over there on the side. I bet you they're all thinking about going over and recovering with uh, putting that, the, the Flow Sports gun into their forearm for, uh, for a little bit of post-workout recovery. And the hands are going up. Hunter is back off. I mean, I mean his gap is, is just widening as we go. Marcus definitely has fallen back in, intensely from the lead, and Hunter is not losing pace at all. It's really a, 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 uh, the, the battle is at the, the fourth position between Tim Schroeder and Adam Klink because first and second seem to be locked up with Hunter and Lucas at the present time. Toby looking over his left shoulder, trying to take a peek at Lucas, making sure that he hasn't lost too much time. And here is Hunter all the way down the floor, passing Adam once again. Adam got lapped. And so now he is still on the farmer carry. Now work at number seven is the sandbag lunges. 30 kilogram that they have to carry on their shoulders over a hundred meter length. Yeah, exactly. And this is, you know, once again, taxing not only the, the legs, but the, the chip, you know, the entire system as well, the core too, right? Exactly. And uh, these athletes really want to stand up straight in that exercise because they want to, they don't want to be crunched by the weight and not being able to breathe. So they really want to open up those lungs as much as they can. And here, Hunter is a tall man. He has a long way to get down because we judges will be looking at the knee hitting ground. Compared to Lucas, a bit shorter, so he's got less of a distance. Yeah, exactly. You're noticing right there the repetitions are being done quite quickly with, with Lucas versus Hunter's, yeah, as you said, longer legs, standing tall each and every time. I think the fatigue starting to hit him. Once again, the last exercises here, sandbag lunges, and the last workout being the wall balls. Heavy legs, right? Plus the runs in between. Exactly, but they are only two workouts away from finishing. So now they're really digging in deep with their, um, their power and, and conditioning. Exactly. As we look up at the my zone board, everybody up in the red zone there. We have uh, Hunter asking for water. He is definitely parched as you know the sweat is just pouring off these athletes. As uh, you know, we're we're deep in this workout. Only one workout left. The wall balls coming up. Hunter though, looking like focused, looking intense. And, and Lucas, let's make this point. Lucas nowhere in sight right now. So the time is taking for Lucas to make this gap. But he is close, he has dropped the bag, and now he's back, not too far away from Hunter. And still, moving slightly sideways, I think that he's, uh, you know, starting to really feel the, the legs at this point. 
52 minutes in on the clock right now. I, this is a, another good point right now. Hunter holds the, the world record time at 57 minutes. Do you think that this, this world record could go down in, in, you know, considering that we're on the assault runners this weekend? By the way he's performing until now, I think we, we, we can really get, get that going. Um, and he's hungry. We've heard him before the race. He wants it really, but not just for himself, but to prove all his contestants as well. Uh, yeah, definitely. Once again, Hunter had the big mouth coming into this thing. He said he was going to win it. He said he was going to show up, and it certainly looks like it. As uh, Lucas looks over to his right to see where Hunter is at, <laughs> I'm telling you, every meter counts. Every second counts at this point as we take a peek at Adam Klink. Tobias is on to the runner, holding a strong third. I, 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 I will, I gotta tell you, I mean, I'm so surprised. I think Toby would be a little faster if he stopped eating so much during this race. <laughs> but either way, look at that pain face. I'm telling you, those lunges on a, on a lean guy like Toby, has got to take its toll. I don't know if he's going to be able to sneak into that third position now, but uh, but definitely I think that he is, you know, pulling further and further away from that fourth place person. And there's Marcus definitely falling back behind. Once again, Marcus and Adam, two guys that have not run the High Rocks race yet. Uh, Marcus qualifying through the VCF and Adam being the wild card here this weekend. And now Hunter on the wall balls, 100 to complete at 9 kilos and a height of 3 meters. And this is the last workout of this competition. Remember, height is important for this workout. The closer you are to the target, the easier it is. And this is what Hunter has for himself. Well, that's right. And, you know, we, we discussed this before the race itself. Hunter was saying he's going to adopt more of a narrow stance on his, uh, on his wall balls, which puts it more on the quads, the front of the legs, versus the hamstrings, which have been taxed after 8K of running. And only a few reps in here, and Hunter's looking very strong. Remember, we have 100 reps to do, which is no small feat. But here is Lucas shaking the legs out as he moves back over. Hunter is at 27 repetitions as Lucas begins. So it all comes down, just as like we saw in the women's race, to who breaks first. You can make up 10 wall balls in 20 seconds. I mean, you can, you can do this. And things have, stranger things have happened in races. And there we are, already up here towards 60 repetitions, 30. The gap is widening slightly, but there's Hunter taking a break and Lucas's chance to make up some time. He's got a, he's a, oh no, and then he breaks as well. 59 minutes on the clock, so no world record today, but still, the podium is wide open as Hunter hits 80 repetitions and Lucas at 51. It's going to come down to this finish. Who wants this bad enough? To Tobias Loudfein at third position, still working. 96, 97 for Hunter, 98, 64 for Lucas, and then 100 repetitions as Hunter at the 60-minute mark crosses the finish line down on his knees. He is now the new world champion of fitness. This is what it's all about. That my friends is what it takes to be a champion just like the with the heart of a lion hunter stands up now we have lucas down here taking that extra second he knows he's lost the first place position a tough loss for the world champion but with 99 reps he puts the ball down again can he just finish this out securing his space on the podium second position stumbling slightly as he moves across the finish line but smiles all the way around this is incredible he needs to take a moment as he relishes in his success staying on top of the sport staying on top of the high rocks world championships of fitness great sportsmanship between the american and german athlete right here we can't count out Toby Loudfine right here as his form is starting to fail. His large frame, one more rep to go as he moves into it, peeling his shirt off. Just ecstatic. Oh, man, Toby, what a surprise. To hold himself at such a high level with these elite athletes is just incredible. Once again, eating and drinking his way through this competition. World Championships of Fitness has not disappointed, and we've got to give it up to Hunter McIntyre, the sheriff 
himself who flew across the world to compete here on this stage today. Very confident, running his mouth, but also showing up. Now, let's take a peek at our results. Coming in at sixth place is Marcus Friesen. Not a bad attempt for a first time out. And fifth place, Adam Klink, our wild card. Also, in Tim Schroeder in the fourth place position. Tobias Loudfine, the surprise here in third place. Lucas Storath and Hunter McIntyre holding that first and second spot down. Now, here it is, Lucas Storath coming in at second place. A truly admirable effort racing against Hunter McIntyre this weekend. There was a lot of uh, proving to do this weekend, right? And, and, and Lucas has truly shown up. Once again, let's, let's take a moment right now and just give him credit. 40 years old, okay? But now it is Hunter McIntyre's turn to stand on top of that podium as the world champion of fitness, the world champion of High Rocks. It is smiles and high fives all around. All these men really, really putting forth an amazing effort today, but Hunter rising to the top. He flew across the world saying he was going to win, and he accomplished his goal. Now, let's check in with the champ. Well, he went out so fast. Lucas, that is, went out so fast. Yeah. Did, was, it, was it your intention to kind of keep up with him, or did you, did you kind of let him peter out? No, I let him push. Yeah. I let him push. I knew it was going to be too much. He always gets excited when we've raced before. He pushes really hard, and that's his talent, and you have to use it. So he used what he had. I used what I had, which was in the sleds and all the other skills, and I just held back, and I knew that I would break him eventually. And he may have won based on my strategy. He could have been stronger, but it was luck and strategy that ended up winning. When did you know that you had this race? Uh, I knew that I had the race after the sled pull. Um, I just knew it was a matter of time until he started to pull back, but I beat him on a run for the first time after the kettlebells, and that meant a lot. I saw you digging in on those kettlebells. Was that the tactic, just to go unbroken and just keep going? Yeah, I broke. I, I wanted to go unbroken, but I broke once on the kettlebells. My tactic was to break him, and uh, he ended up, it was just kind of a bluff. I knew that I was going to try to push, and he broke. And that's right there when I won it. So it was a, it was a good strategy and timing, I guess. Um, excellent. We didn't see any weaknesses throughout the whole race, but yeah. you did mention that you were starting to cramp. Where is the point where you thought, oh man, I better reduce the pace maybe? After the, after the farmer's carry, I just knew that I couldn't push any further. Um, I just held exactly like a mile, a kilo, a millimeter an hour faster than him. And I just stayed there. If I pushed any faster, these hamstrings were gonna go. So I was just, I was spitting all over the place. I knew I was, I was gonna blow up soon. Great. Yeah. And what was uh, your, your whole um, a warm up? Because we heard you on the line just before your first kilometer speaking out, here we go, champ. Yeah. So what was going through your head at that time? Uh, you know, it's, it's tough to compete against people that you really care about. These are all my friends. I had to remind myself that this is like a championship and then I was the champion and then I had to win. So like I just kind of started beating my chest and I kind of got myself in that mindset. And at that point, um, you switch gears and he becomes an enemy rather than a comrade, but he's still my friend. Great, and we've seen uh, some very good sportsmanship at the end, hugs and uh, fist bumps, and this is great to see. This yeah. is what sport is all about. Yeah. yeah, and it's really what High Rocks is all about as well. So. Really enjoyed your performance today. In fact, all the men, we want to congratulate them in the elite race. You are now the High Rocks World Champion of Fitness. Congratulations to Under McIntyre. Thank Congratulations. Thanks, guys. We will see you guys at the next race.